Hi folks, I've been wanting to do a video on this plant for some time now, but between extreme heat and extreme bugs, it hasn't really been possible. And now, unfortunately, um, most of these plants uh, have gone to seed, meaning that they are beyond their prime harvesting period, although uh, there's still a great deal of potency left in this plant. And fortunately for us today, we found this really wonderful specimen right here. Uh, a late comer. Seems to be growing quite fine amid our uh, buckwheat and turnips in our garden. Now this plant is a member of uh, the wild lettuces. And I know it bears no semblance to any of the domestic lettuce that we're familiar with. But believe it or not, it, it is actually the ancestor of all our uh, common domestic lettuce today. Uh, unlike lettuce, uh, domestic lettuce, this plant uh, has some very unique properties that makes it very valuable plant to know. Uh, it is a medicinal plant, um, well known for its uh, ability to to alleviate pain. It's an analgesic as well as an antispasmodic. So much so that it was given the nickname opium lettuce. Uh, now that that is a misnomer. The plant actually does not contain any opium or opium-like narcotic properties whatsoever. It's a completely safe, natural uh, painkiller. Um, it's used for a variety of pain, um, mostly uh, muscular joint, uh, arthritic pain, for example, even uh, said to alleviate migraine headaches. And being antispasmodic, it's, uh, it's also said to alleviate the pain associated with uh, irritable bowel syndrome, and even things like asthma. So very, very wonderful plant to get to know. So let's identify this plant. Uh, you can see some here beside me that uh, have gone to seed, as I said. They have, there is one here, they have a very tiny little yellow flower. Now I did take a picture uh, earlier on in the season with my phone of these flowers uh, for identification purposes, which I, I will insert here. And as you can see from the picture, the flowers, uh, dandelion color, uh, they're very small, about the size of a thumbnail, fingernail. And when they turn to seed, like their cousin, dandelion, they're related to dandelion, also chicory. Uh, they're also related to, um, they're all part of the sunflower family, which even includes things like arnica. But when they go to seed, they resemble tiny little dandelions in that they have these round, fluffy seed pods. So this is a good way to identify them. Um, the best way to identify them, however, is that wherever you score, cut, or break this plant, it will exude a creamy white latex type liquid, which is the source of its pain reliever, um, all through this plant. The other plants don't do that. So that's a good defining characteristic. The leaves on this plant are uh, scalloped like this, similar in some ways. It actually bears a, a quite a bit of resemblance to its cousin chicory. But the one defining characteristic that you will be able to discern this plant from others, especially, say, from uh, chicory, is that the leaves, um, on the underside of the leaves, the central rib on the underside of the leaf uh, has tiny little spines on it. Now, I will bring one of the leaves up to the camera here. I'll take one off of this plant. Now, I don't know if you can see that on the camera. Do you see the oozing white sap where I pulled that leaf off. Anywhere, as I said, this plant is full of it. This is, uh, the plant's uh, Latin name is, is lactosa, and the root of that, of course, is the word lac, meaning milk. And this is the source of the plant's uh, medicinal qualities. So I'm just going to bring this leaf up to the camera so that you can see, you can see the creamy white latex there. And I'm going to turn it sideways. Hopefully you'll be able to see that. The edges of the leaves themselves are, are prickly, uh, like chicory, but right along the spine, the underside spine, central vein of the leaf, there are tiny little spikes, little, little prickles, hence the name prickly lettuce. Now, another defining characteristic, let's save that one is the leaves, where the leaves are uh, alternate up the stem, 
and where the leaves attach to the stem, they have tiny little lobes, uh, maybe on, you can see here, that, that wrap around, sort of wrap around the stem a tiny little bit. So the prickles on the back central spine of the underside of the leaf, tiny little yellow flowers, and uh, the creamy white latex. Now, you can do what, whatever you like with this plant as far as, as a creating a method by which you want to use it to ingest it. Um, the easiest and simplest way in what we do is simply cut it, dry it, and make a tea out of it. Uh, you can turn it into tinctures if you want it using alcohol, for example. I've even heard of people smoking it, which I wouldn't recommend for numerous reasons. And some people score the plant repeatedly um, and try and harvest the, uh, the white latex. But in reality, that latex is, every single part of this plant is infused with it. And doing that simply harms the plant. And, and as always with every single plant that we, that we utilize, you want to harvest it ethically. So it, I would recommend snipping the plant up from the ground because we have some examples uh, throughout the property here where deer have forged on these plants, having snipped them about halfway up. The plant then exudes that creamy white latex which turns brownish color and hardens and it can actually produce more stems and continue to propagate. So be ethical when you do that. Some people I see uh, taking only the leaves. If you do that, take a leaf here, a leaf there, etc., leaving the plant to continue to grow. Uh, if you cut it and harvest it and dry it, um, as I said, the, the stem is hollow. The stem is full of that creamy white medicinal latex. So I personally believe that it doesn't make sense to only take the leaf take the stem as well and if you do uh, what the way we do it is we cut that stem with snippers into tiny little parts because the, it's much heavier obviously than the leaf uh, when you go to dry it and then uh, grind it all up in your food processor chopper blender what have you and use it as a tea steep it for however long you like and as with all medicinal plants not all but certainly most medicinal plants plants that are really good for you they tend to be very bitter uh, and that is also true for prickly lettuce, so you'll want to add some honey, perhaps, or sweetener. Or if you want, some people like to add another uh, herbal tea, such as chamomile or mint tea, whatever your preference. Uh, start with uh, perhaps a, a, a tablespoon. Um, I use a tea bell. Let it steep and try it and see how it feels. A very, very good plant to know. Prickly lettuce. Now. It is starting to go where we are, as you can see. This We're lucky to find this one. They're all kind of turning this way. Uh, plants that you harvest for the medicinal qualities, when you're harvesting the aerial part of the plant, the above ground part, you usually want to harvest it when the, uh, the flowers are starting to blossom. Now, where we live, we're at a little higher elevation, a little higher latitude. Um, they're starting to go now, but where you live, you might be able to find lots of them that are still in this condition. So get to know this plant, go on to YouTube, do a little bit of research. There's tons of research that has been done, uh, scientific research that has been done on this plant, uh, and really get to know it because it's a wonderful plant to know in your, in your uh, prepper homestead survival garden. Prickly lettuce.